this episode of Ice Pilots NWT, Operation Airlift. When the ferry linking north to south is grounded, Buffalo mounts a campaign to move vital goods. Let me make a call. A Mountie moves house and home, Buffalo style. Bye bye, TV. And the McBrien sneak a peek at an important delivery of their own. In Canada's Northwest Territories, the ferry that crosses the broad Mackenzie River is a crucial link in the chain that keeps food, fuel, and other essentials flowing to the people of the North. But today... I just got a last minute phone call from a trucking company in town. Uh, the ferry that connects Yellowknife to the rest of the world has gone out. Normally, trucks haul basic supplies from the south up the Mackenzie Highway, then cross the Mackenzie River by ferry. That ferry is their only way across until the river freezes and an ice road opens. With the ferry out, the 25,000 people in Yellowknife and the remote northern communities beyond are left high and dry. Can't get any freight across the Mackenzie River to Yellowknife and then beyond up to Good Hope, Delny, Toledo, and Norwells. Twice a year, at spring thaw and fall freeze up, Buffalo's plains bridge the gap. But this ferry breakdown catches everyone by surprise. River shuttle. Right now? The solution? An emergency air freight shuttle out of the Hay River Airport where truckloads of goods are already backing up. We got to the truck company uh, needs the DC-4 to go to Hay River to start river shuttle. Um, but I'm just getting word that it might not have this, the, the proper equipment installed quite yet. The timing is terrible. Buffalo's mighty four-engine DC-4, with its 20,000-pound hauling capacity, is the perfect plane for the job. But as Mikey tells his father, Joe McBrien, it's not going anywhere. Well, here. RTL just called. They want a DC-4. But I guess DC-4 is not ready. What's the matter No TCAS. TCAS stands for Traffic Collision Avoidance System. It's similar to radar used by air traffic controllers. An antenna on the roof and a computer processor and display installed in the cockpit provide a set of electronic eyes so the pilot can see other aircraft up to 64 kilometers away. Joe checks with his son Rod, Buffalo's director of maintenance. No TCAS. No TCAS. New federal regulations require the DC-4 to have a TCAS installed, but Rod hasn't had a chance to add that technology on the plane yet. Joe's concerned that we don't have a DC-4 ready, um, but what I'll do is I'll get a DC-4, get the TCAS system completed. And Joe's also worried the smaller C-46 won't be able to keep up with the freight until the DC-4 is ready and that Mikey's making promises he can't keep. You're gonna commit yourself with no backup. Can't be relying on 146 that may be ready to date. We can't fight yesterday's fire. If we don't at least try, we don't get any of it. I know, I know, but we got it. it it's going out there with a, instead of a fire hole, you're trying to piss the fire. Uh, my father's visibly upset because the DC-4 is better for the customer, um, hauls more freight. I wish we had a four, but we gotta do what we can. We should have a couple horses and a sleigh and... This, I'm doing the best as I, I can. Know, I know, I know you're doing the best you can, but we don't have any airplanes out there. Get her done. The only aircraft available to make shuttle runs throughout the day is one of Buffalo's two Curtis C-46s. The other C-46 will be needed on the regular Mackenzie Valley run. So we need 146 one, the first trip in the Cape, yeah. back and in the valley. Okay. And then this thing, or one of them, just to do shuttles. 
Possibly, possibly four shuttles. Sometimes we're leaving in the morning for the first shuttle. It's going to be in here for six. For six. Maintenance supervisor Cliff Dyson and his team scramble to get the C-46 ready. Now we're going to jack up the C-46 and do a gear swing on her. A gear swing tests the landing gear, making sure the hydraulic system is raising, lowering, and locking the wheels properly. Built to survive World War II, the C-46 has no delicate electronics. It's purely mechanical. Okay. And virtually indestructible. Whacking the tire and jumping on the wing actually compresses the wheel strut back to the landing position. It may seem like an unconventional way to reset the landing gear, but it works. Again, it was fun. The next morning, before dawn, the rescue mission kicks into gear. We'll do a run up at the threshold. Captain Devin Brooks, a three year Buffalo veteran, and co pilot Scott Blue, in his second year with the airline, brace themselves for a grueling day. There's a lot of situations at Buffalo where we go from sort of the normal operating tempo into a jacked up level. 100,000 pounds of freight need to be moved from Hay River to Yellowknife to ultimately reach more than 25,000 people. Everything looks good. Everything looks good to say. With the C-46's cruising speed of 300 kilometers per hour, they'll be in Hay River in less than 45 minutes. At the Hay River Airport, trucks loaded with freight to be flown to Yellowknife and beyond are already lining up. And already starting his day from hell is cargo coordinator Jack Sim. Keep them coming, we'll keep, keep hauling, I don't give a shit. His job today, to get the freight off the trucks and onto the planes as fast as possible. If you want something done, you gotta get Buffalo to do it, or else you're never gonna get your groceries over there. Jack's all set as Devin and Scott land their C-46 in Hay River. I have never seen it this chaotic down here. Buffalo's other C-46 is already here to pick up one load before it's needed on the valley run later today. AJ's gonna go home with the load, and then he's gonna go up the valley, and we're gonna bring all the food up throughout the day today, so yeah, pretty much everything has to be flown over today. A C-46 can carry about 13,000 pounds of freight per trip. AJ, you able to take any of that bread that's sitting on the ground there? Yeah. Buffalo also has a DC-3 here this morning, and it can haul 7,000 pounds. But there are 100,000 pounds of cargo to shuttle to Yellowknife. These first trips will only move a third of that. AJ takes off in his C-46 with the first load. This sled, one more skidoo, and uh, that's it, then we're back to Yellowknife. One, two, three, go. And just a little bit more, and then we can get it. Perfect, cut. As dawn breaks, the other C-46 is packed to the struts. Reach the maximum amount of stuff that we're all comfortable in taking. We're gonna load up and rock and roll. But we'll be back soon. Hello, Jack here. Mikey TXW is loaded. Weighed down with a full load, Devin and Scott C-46 struggles to get airborne.
at the Yellowknife cargo terminal. <clears throat> so bring that other skid over here. Janelle Glenn has a nightmare on her hands. So Fort Good Hope will leave on this pallet. She's just started job sharing with overwhelmed cargo manager Kelly Jurasevich. This morning, Kelly is homesick, and Janelle has arrived to chaos. What is in there, though? Is it frozen or is it general? General. This freaking shit is nuts, man. Yeah. Yes. Freight for the regular valley run is backing up, and AJ's already arrived with the first river shuttle load. Today's, today's a very stressful day. We have probably the amount of flights we do today would be equivalent to a week's worth of work in one day. Okay, I'm gonna... Don't move all that shit. Don't move all that shit. Approaching Yellowknife. Devin and Scott have the runway in sight, and Scott's getting a chance to land the plane. They're all complete, sir. Thank you. Let it slow down on its own. Let her slow. Keep flying it to the ground. Settle it on. Good. I got it. You got it. Packed to the hilt, their C-46 will have to be quickly offloaded and sent back to Hay River for another load. But as the plane arrives and Janelle heads out to meet it, it's icy. she encounters a major snack. Is that stuck, Byron? Yes, it is. Is your load of work? I suppose well, she's not even going to. They have never gone today, have they? You know what? Let me make a call. I'll be right back. Back in there to take freight. I just got stuck. The road to the tarmac is blocked. This river shuttle is already in trouble. Is that stuck, Byron? Yes, it is. Is your load of work? You know what? Let me make a call. I'll be right back. On a day that Buffalo can't afford to have anything go wrong, something already has. An 18-wheeler has skidded across the road, blocking the cargo terminal from the tarmac, where a fully packed C-46 needs to be unloaded. Too slow, too cold. Until the truck is moved, Buffalo's emergency river shuttle is paralyzed. Cargo supervisor Janelle Glenn now has to find a way to get the truck off the road. Can we get the loader? He's stuck in the middle of the road. Sorry, man. It's a little hectic. Trucks get stuck, you know? You just can't, can't predict what's gonna happen in a day. But just as Janelle has one obstacle removed... You gotta be kidding me. Died on me. Another setback. Never, I've never filled it since I've been here. The forklift has run out of gas. Go run to that auto shop over there yeah. and ask Randy to get you a, a jerry can of diesel. Diesel, eh? Well, you know, you have to be go, go, go in this job, and you really can't just be like, oh, well, that box is 60 pounds. I can't lift that. Because if there's nobody around, then it's not going to get done. With the forklift back to life, Janelle pushes hard to get the freight moving. It's coming right now. The freed truck rolls up, ready to take the supplies into Yellowknife. OK, now back out while you're going down. Watch behind you. This is all ours, so we can go next door. Down. You're good. At last, Janelle gets the final skid away. And with the first load emptied, her boyfriend Devin gets set to head back to Hay River. Well, Jack Malcolm will be there in 45 minutes. Okay. We'll be there around quarter after 12, 1230. Okay. I love you too. See you later. See you at Hay River. While Buffalo is throwing all available aircraft at the river shuttle. Okay. Yeah. Mikey's still okay. dealing with a full slate of other contracts. Wow, well, the river shuttle's sure sucking up all the resources, and you got we got actually a lot more to do, too. In Lutzel K, a Chippewayan native community on the east arm of Great Slave Lake, an RCMP corporal is waiting. Corporal Sheldon Robb, uh, personally stationed in Lutzel K, detachment commander, and going to be transferring to uh, Delaney Detachment uh, in Delaney. Corporal Rob is carrying on the time-honored RCMP tradition of serving as a northern nomad. It's fun to, uh, to work in here. It's uh, enjoyable. 
In the 1870s, the newly formed Northwest Mounted Police sent a band of hardy officers to the territories to keep the law in the wild frontier. In 1920, the force became the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. To this day, officers serve far-flung settlements across the North, picking up their lives for a new posting every few years. Yeah, I'm sad to go, but it's uh, a new adventure to go to somewhere else here in the North as well. It'll be my uh, fourth posting, so in the Northwest Territories. Corporal Rob is moving from Lutzelke to Delaney, 700 kilometers northwest. And with no road access, he couldn't just hire a van. He had to book Buffalo Airways. And just stay over the lake if we gotta do a 360, so be it. Yep. Flying in a DC-3, Captain Justin Simley and co-pilot Ian Bottomley are on their way to pick up his goods. Approach briefing. Picked up a little bit of ice there. I see that. But they're battling unexpected freezing rain, creating visibility problems. Be able to see here. Justin and Ian need a clear view of the terrain below in order to land. So they begin their descent to get beneath the clouds and free themselves of further icing. Hey, keep her coming down, brother. Roger. We got a good run at this one. Uh, what the f have we got here? Distance is nine miles. The Lutzelke landing strip is not well marked. Hey, let's go to the other side of this island and we'll come around. Good. As they come around, they finally spot a snow-covered field. All right, I like this. It's the runway. Full flap. Full flap. Final check, please. 65. Okay. And we're there. Time for Justin and Ian to start loading all the worldly possessions of an RCMP corporal on the move. How you doing? Good yourself. Real good today. Good, good job. It's moving day, is it? Yeah. But the corporal has a major concern about one possession indispensable to surviving the northern winter. That's my big screen TV, though. I don't want to see that broken, though. Well, I bought my big screen TV in 1995 when I was in high level Alberta there. And it's made the move from high level to Nuvik, to Hay River, to Lutzake, and now to Delaney. A good satellite TV is always good to have here in these communities too to help pass the time by, so. With the TV and other lesser essentials on board, Justin is ready to head to Delaney. Corporal Rob will fly in later. Have fun, Delaney. Nice meeting you. You Pleasure take care. Fine. You yeah, too. Very eh? good work, you guys. Keep yeah. up the good work, and yeah. uh, we'll see you around. Thanks very much. We yeah, like thanks. working with A you. A happy guys. customer, as long as his big screen TV arrives in one piece. Bye bye, TV. See you tomorrow. <laughs> In Yellowknife, Buffalo desperately needs to get the DC-4 in the game to help clear the river shuttle backlog. According to new federal regulations, mechanics must install a piece of technology called a TCAS, a traffic collision avoidance system. We're working hard trying to get it installed so the DC-4 can join the 46 down in Hay River during the river shuttle but it may be too late. Technically, we needed that TCAS and that DC-4 yesterday. As Joe warned, Mikey may have promised more than he can deliver. With the ferry linking Yellowknife to the south broken down. That's heavy. Buffalo Airways has a DC-3 and one C-46 airlifting cargo from Hay River. They're shuttling the freight across Great Slave Lake to Yellowknife where it's being sorted and distributed. But as the trucks keep coming, they're having trouble keeping up with the backlog. We gotta go find some tarps or something to get over some of this frozen or the ravens are gonna get into it. And now, cargo coordinator Jack Sim has a new problem. Get out of here! It's tin foil, you moron! Oh, it's Kinder Eggs. The one box that had something in it, he figured it out. He didn't want to eat the mops. So Jack's come up with a plan. 
It's just a waiting game with him now, eh? It's man versus raven. Man had gun, it wouldn't be a competition. It'd be raven versus ground. But it looks like the scavenger may win this standoff as a bigger bird arrives to claim Jack's attention. Let's uh, get the produce on his pallet. There's a mountain of cargo still to move. We gotta unload them in that bitter cold and get them into a plane immediately before the groceries freeze. We can't have that happen. Actually, the loads are going real well. Then more help arrives. A DC-3 taxis in. Now Jack has two planes on the job. So you're trying to coordinate two or three planes at the same time, and load them. Get my pallet off and just throw it over on the side here. All right. I'll try to grab this one. We'll get a pallet jack in there. It's a lot of running, a lot of phone calls, and a lot of screaming and hollering, but you get her done. Oh, the other one's gone. Five zero. With the second crew, Jack has some extra hands. Box by box, they give it everything they've got. Ready where you are. But without the biggest plane in the fleet, the DC-4, it's an endless task. Basically, the 46 hauls two-thirds of what a DC-4 does. On this trip, because it's a short distance, uh, the DC-4 is more effective and efficient airplane, uh, so we need it on the job as soon as possible. Yeah, basically, if the DC-4 was operational right now, we'd have every pilot and every type of machine except the electro down here. Yeah? Very nice chaos. Very nice chaos. There you go. And during all the chaos, the scavenger returns. Raven going at the food over there. Check it out. Raven. The Raven. Meanwhile, back in the Yellowknife hangar, mechanics are pushing to get the DC-4 airworthy. DC-4 is getting ready to go down the Eden River. With its 20,000-pound cargo capacity, the 4 would be the ideal aircraft for this airlift. In fact, it's the same plane that was used 60 years ago in the most famous airlift ever, the Berlin Airlift back in 1948. After World War II, the Soviets who occupied the east side of Berlin blocked road and railway access to West Berlin, controlled by Britain, France, and the United States. In response, the Western Allies organized a massive airlift to get supplies to the innocent Berliners trapped in their own city. The determined spirit of free Berlin, backed by the Allied airlift, keeps the Soviet aggression... It was a 15-month operation modified DC-4s and other military aircraft lifted over two million tons of food and supplies. The Hay River airlift is much smaller, but as important for Northerners. Virtually the same distance, same airplane, and uh, for the same reason, keep people going till, till their uh, main supply opens up again. Well, I make it out okay, you know, they... Uh... But with the dc 4 still in maintenance, the going is slow. And it looks like it won't get any faster. Rod McBrien's wife, Sasha, arrives with a school tour she booked weeks ago. Hey, everybody. What's happening? What do you have lined up for us? We're going to go inside the hangar. For everyone who wants to just follow Mikey. No, hey. Rod first met Sasha, a farm girl from the South, 10 years ago. I took my first job teaching in Hay River. I came up to Yellowknife on Buffalo, and uh, Joe was excited to meet new teachers from Hay River and didn't charge me. So I don't think I've paid for a Buffalo ticket yet. <laughs> and I met Rod that weekend. So this, uh, this airplane right here is the CL-215. This is the one that does uh, all the water bombing. Curtis. Sasha's class gets up close and personal with living history planes that first flew long before their parents were even born. How long does it take to get uh, water? It takes about uh, six to 10 seconds to fill the plane. 13, 14,000 pounds a day, it flies 1,000 miles a day, um, five days a week. 
If you were to go for a ride in the airplane, it's really nice and smooth in the air, but the landing and takeoff is it's quite exciting. I'm not really a big group of kids type person. I guess I've been stuck in the hangar the whole time. I wasn't really exposed to the general public. But he needs to get used to kids fast. Rod and Sasha are expecting their first child. Both Rod and I always knew that we wanted to have kids. Rod's never felt like we needed to be in a rush for anything. He's always told me that we're young. And when things are ready to happen, they'll happen. I have to prepare you know, to become a new father. Unlike preparing for a job with aircraft or preparing an aircraft, I don't know what I'm doing. When I went to school, that's what everybody talked about is World War II. I guess now we talk about Desert Storm and stuff, right? Family guy, eh? The history of The Simpsons. I think Rod's got pretty limited experience with kids, so I think this is a good test for him to see how he can uh, test his patience when, uh, once his little one shows up. I had to raise Mikey. I was like 13 years old and had to change his diapers and make him watch The Simpsons was the only thing that shut him up. These ones are also indicators of direction. I think I'm handling the pregnancy pretty calm. Healthy, not healthy, whatever happens, is the best is my motto. We'll just we'll just take it one day at a time. And an upcoming ultrasound will give Rod a fuzzy glimpse of his future. Flying over the Mackenzie Valley. It's a beautiful day. I'm on our way to Delaney. DC3 Captain Justin Simley is transporting an RCMP corporal's belongings to his new home. Delaney, population 560 is an aboriginal community that has been around for centuries. The lifestyle here is a mix of modern and traditional. Oh, oh, white fish. Oh, oh, oh. At the Delaney airstrip, Justin meets moving man, Lindsay Blake. Hey, how are you, man? Good, good, good to see you guys. Long time no see. Yeah, you gotcha. How you been? Sorry we're a little late. How long have oh. you been here? They unload Corporal Rob's stuff. A mishap with one piece in particular could get them arrested. Big screen TV? Yes, sir. Gotta stay busy in Delaney doing something, I oh, guess. Oh, yeah. New sheriff in town. Yeah, we moved him from Anubic uh, several years ago. The North is a small world. Buffalo's work is done here. So Justin heads back to Yellowknife to join the river shuttle. In town, Lindsay sets up Corporal Rob's new home. Seems the two men have some history. I've been in the North 15 years, and the only time I've ever been given a uh, traffic violation was with Sheldon Rob, the guy moving in right now. He gave me a $500 traffic ticket because my registration was two days overdue. Memories like this can turn big screen TVs into broken screen TVs. Meanwhile, Corporal Rob is already on the job. Sheldon Rob, Chief Raymond Tucho. Raymond Tucho. Nice to meet you. First order of business, meeting with the local band council chief. Good. This is Jim's replacement there, Raymond. With only a two or three person detachment in small settlements, the Mounties must forge strong relationships in the community. Yeah, it's important to become part of the community and, uh, you know, it helps get the respect of the people and uh, if you give it that, you'll get that in return. Having moved four times in the north, Corporal Rob never knows what his accommodations will be like. There. House. Oh, yeah, these are nice. Oh, I'm very, very happy with this house. All that's left is a bit of unfinished business. It's been a while, but you must remember me from that uh, ticket you gave me, $500 ticket, first time we ever met. For no There's registration no in my, no registration <laughs> on my uh, Mustang. But no hard feelings. Lindsay's left the TV in one piece. <laughs> All right, we'll call well, some people. Any consolation, here. Lindsay, I would give my own mama a ticket. <laughs> That's good. That's good to know. <laughs> Excellent. Back at the Yellowknife cargo terminal. Forgot how much energy it takes. <laughs> the stress of handling massive loads from the river shuttle and untangling freight mix-ups for the valley runs is taking its toll on Janelle. 
I'm a little irritated right now because, like, look at this warehouse. It's a friggin' mess. Is this all Good Hope? Yes. No, there's Stellan A here. Oh, and there's a Toledo on there, too. Things were not put in their proper place. Uh, there was no proper paperwork on certain things. Jesus, Janelle calls her colleague Jack and Hay River to vent. What's the matter? It's a goddamn shit show oh, here. That's what I'm, that's what's happening. Okay, there's freaking Frozen still sitting here in the truck. What do you mean? In the freaking truck since Sunday. Oh. It's a freaking nightmare here. Well, I think I got another truck. Okay, bye. With a steady stream of freight rolling into Hay River, it's no picnic for Jack either. What airline's taking your freight? They never told you? No. But there's a ray of light. In Yellowknife, the DC-4 is finally ready to join the river shuttle. And not a minute too soon. With its 20,000 pound hauling capacity, the DC-4 should make all the difference. It's been a couple of weeks since she's formed. Back from Delaney, Justin checks the oil and fuel levels in the DC-4's wing tanks. The 4 has no cockpit fuel gauges. 160, 140. Let's just get her going here. Yep. Justin and co-pilot Sean Barry fire her up. Systems go. But suddenly, a snag. I got no pressure. Justin stops the DC-4 well short of the runway. Hang on, Justin. An oil leak from the number three engine. I'm not taking a chance. We get the DC-4 started up, we're all ready to go, and bang, massive oil leak. Now there's another problem we have to deal with. What a bad time for this to happen. Justin has no choice but to head back to the hangar. There's still an enormous amount of freight in Hay River that needs to be flown to Yellowknife. But with time ticking and oil leaking, the DC-4 may never come to the rescue. With the Mackenzie River Ferry out of operation, Don't move all that. it's been a crazy day in Buffalo. Let me make a call. I'll be right back. Very nice chaos. Very nice chaos. There you go. Everyone's been going full on to airlift freight from Hay River to Yellowknife. Devon C-46 has been making runs since before dawn. I don't think too many people will starve by the amount of food we've taken up the Yellowknife today, so. But they've only moved a little over half the cargo so far. Buffalo really needs the DC-4 to get in the game. On this trip, because it's a short distance, uh, the DC-4 is more effective and efficient airplane, uh, so we need it on the job as soon as possible. I got no pressure. But just as Captain Justin Simley was set to take off, one of the four's engines sprung a leak. An oil leak on uh, number three engine, so boys are gonna have a look at it here. Buffalo's maintenance team leaps into action. You're gonna get problems when it gets cold, man. That's just the way it is, so. Uh, we got great engineers here. They, they're doing their damnedest to get us going again. An oil leak on lots of oil. We have to wash it and run it. And we'll see where it's coming from. They wash off the excess oil, revealing the source of the leak. Oh, it's a loose rock recover. Enough to keep loose on the cover. So we just got to tighten up and check it over, make sure it's good, and we're good to go. An easy fix. The plane is pronounced fit to fly. So, for the second time today, the DC 4 will attempt to take off for Hay River. Ready?
This time, there's no snag. With the DC-4 safely away, Rod McBrien slips out for an important appointment. Yeah. Good. He and wife Sasha are having a 3D ultrasound of their unborn baby. And like any new parents, they're nervous. Kind of a scary at first. Jake's head is right here. I think it is definitely a mother's worry or parents' worry till the baby's born. You know, that everything's okay. And that's the head. That's the little head right there. The top. Does he have really large lips? That's his eyes, his nose, his full lips here. Yeah. And then his lip looks like Mikey's lip. He's smiling. That's really good in there, right? That is so cute. Did you see that? Look that big smile. I don't know if they even smile. Everything's looking A-OK. -okay, and their relief inspires a plan. We really wanted the DVD because we hadn't told anybody that we were going to get the 3D ultrasound. And the families are both pretty excited. We're gonna show them these pictures and DVD. I think it's a pretty cool surprise. After a day of setbacks, Buffalo's DC-4 finally makes it to Hay River. With its cargo capacity of 20,000 pounds, it's the edge that Buffalo has desperately needed for this emergency airlift. It's all hands on deck. Even 67-year-old chief pilot Arnie Schrader pushes pallets. You need a strap in there, boys, or? Go, go, go! It's been a long day. I don't know if it's the airplane or the operator, Arnie, but OK, you're not allowed to drive anymore. <laughs> get, get, get out of the way. I'm driving. Back to the ceiling, the DC-4 is ready to head home. With another 18-wheeler full of freight for Yellowknife, Justin will have to race back for one last load before his duty day runs out. Today was worked perfect. Everything worked perfect. So it doesn't get any better than this. But back in the Yellowknife cargo terminal. You can just separate it later. It's been a freaking gong show today. With two more massive loads of cargo still to come in on the DC-4, for Janelle, it ain't over yet. Buffalo's river shuttle is winding down. The last load of freight from Hay River is on its way to Yellowknife. But at the Yellowknife cargo terminal, Janelle Glenn is still going full tilt to try to keep up with the massive backlog. I'm fing exhausted today. She's moved mountains of cargo so far, and there's still one more plane to come. Play. Right way over. On the runway, so there's no hurry to try the brakes. The DC-4 is back with the last 20,000 pounds. It, it can be a nightmare, it can be a gong show, but at the end of the day, these people depend on you. It's not, it's not just something that you can be like, oh, whatever, I guess they didn't get their milk today. I think it's the first time in Buffalo history down there, it took all day and half the night to do freight. And there's some good news about the river ferry. We just got word that the ferry's going in tomorrow. We moved 100,000 pounds in one day. That's freaking awesome for the last minute. By tomorrow, because of Buffalo, Arctic outposts will get their provisions on time. After 24 hours from hell, the McBrien clan gathers for a much needed break the next day in Hay River. Hey, sweetheart. A rare family dinner hosted by Joe's daughter, Kathy, and her husband, Fraser. No phones ringing during dinner. 
Yeah, everybody loves king crab. Kathy and Fraser always put on a good dinner party. They prep, they serve, they keep the whole flow going. They don't um, make anybody do dishes. For a family that works together every day, the McBryans don't often sit down for a meal together. Oh my God, look at that. That's why I didn't go to work this morning. I've been I up since five preparing. <laughs> yeah, right. The only non-family member at this gathering is Mikey's girlfriend, Gail. Gail is an amazing, amazing person. And uh, we both wonder every day why she's even with me, because it, as it, we're like the original odd couple. We have absolutely nothing in common at all. My family likes her better than they like me. Yeah, she gets invited to family dinners where they just forget to invite me. Yeah, don't scare her off. We want to keep Gail around. I just want Mikey to marry her now before she clues in and leaves. But tonight, it's all about grandchildren. With Kathy's kids in their teens, Sash. Rod and Sasha's baby will be the first McBrien grandchild in 15 years. Yeah. I already have this. <laughs> Buffalo Joe and especially wife Sharon are anxious for the wait to be over. Sharon is pacing the floors for this baby. She, she can't wait. We're going to have a grandchild, so we're looking forward to that. And the family will get a glimpse of the new baby sooner than they think. Well, we have a surprise video for you guys. So you want to come downstairs and watch it? Where's the popcorn? Are you still hungry? <laughs> <laughs> Jasper, I may be sitting Jasper. Come on, go for the truck ride. Come on, Dad, you can do it. I'm getting a guilt thing here. Okay, here's baby Eddie. Where is it? Can you can you see him? Oh, look at the baby. Oh, it's oh Sasha. Oh, yeah, there, yeah, yeah. there. That's his nose. <laughs> There's two hands. Oh, good. <laughs> I think Joe's very excited about Rod having a baby. I think he's been waiting a long time for this. And in just over a month, the wait will be over, and the newest McBrien will meet the family. Oh, there's the smile. On the next episode of Ice Pilots NWT, Buffalo springs into action when disaster strikes Haiti. There's a lot of suffering down there. Chuck clashes with the pilots. Good trying to be up that shot bit, dude. When he tackles a problem his way. Don't f with the Chuck. And Audrey returns, but lands in the hot seat beside Joe. We're way off of it again.